Hey you guys, it's Brid. Today I am here to address a recent video that was done by BX Beast Boy. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so this video is going to be to the point, direct, and I want it to be heard with open ears because this is the last time I will address this on my channel. If there's one thing you guys hopefully know about me and you should know about me going forward is that I will not allow people to lie on my name, period. I'm not going to tolerate it and if you're going to come forth with criticisms or say that you don't like my videos, fine. I'm all good with that. But you're not going to come out and say that I'm something that I am not. So I have a couple points from his video that I'm going to address because my subscribers deserve to know exactly where I stand on this. So this video is not for people who can't stand me or don't like my voice or just listen to everything that one creator has to say and they don't listen to anyone else. This video is for my subscribers or people that have questions. The first thing that he mentioned was that I had been begging for his attention. I'm going to link my original vi uh, video in the description box of this video regarding why I stopped watching BX Beast Boy. I still stand by everything that I said in that video. I felt like it was easy to understand why I was making the video. I felt like, you know, my criticisms of him were fair in my opinion and I'm not just saying that because it's my video. When I first started on YouTube, I had it in my mind that I wasn't going to rely on any other creator to build my platform. It was all me. I don't expect to collab with anyone. I don't expect shout outs. I don't care. My growth has been because of the content that I've made. Have I possibly picked up a couple of subscribers by other YouTubers mentioning me? Absolutely. And I did address that in my original video and I extended my thanks to him for reacting to my uh, couple of videos that are no longer there now, which is all fine. I collected a few subscribers. I don't need anyone's attention on this platform, but my subscribers. Those are the people who are here to have conversations with me, watch my videos, interact with my content. I don't need attention from anyone else. I don't care. The other thing that I'll say about that is even if I wanted attention from another YouTuber, don't you think that I would go to a YouTuber that has a bigger platform than at the time I think he had 12.5 um, thousand subscribers? Don't you think that I would target someone that has maybe 500,000 subscribers and hope that I would get noticed by them? Why the hell would I even care about someone that has that many subscribers giving me attention when I don't even want attention from the get-go unless it's from my own audience? The second thing that he had to say was that I sent someone to his live stream to link my video in his live. First of all, no, that's completely wrong. I never ask my subscribers or anyone that watches my videos. I don't encourage anyone to go share my videos with other content creators who cover similar subjects as I do. The views that I get on my videos are from the subjects that I talk about and the interaction and engagement on those videos. Therefore, I rely on the algorithm to push the videos out. I would never ask anyone, go put my video in so-and-so's live stream. Now, obviously, okay, you want to talk about receipts. I don't have a receipt that I didn't do that, but I don't care. Why would I want anyone to go over to his live stream knowing that we've had a falling out just to put it in his chat? No, my videos get views on their own. I don't need one person to go put 
a, a video link in someone's live chat. I don't give a fuck about that. The next thing that he brought up was that I and Amanda, my moderator, have been lying about BX. Now, let's talk about a, let's talk for a second about lying. As far as lying on my platform, there has been nothing that I've ever said in any video that was a lie. I state my opinions based on how I'm feeling and my opinions based on evidence or research that I have done on certain subjects. As far as spreading lies, I believe in my personal opinion, what he was alluding to was the fact that Amanda, and I'm not going to fight her fight for her. If she wants to make her own video, she will definitely do that. So I'm not solely focused on what he said about her, but I do want to mention this because he's lumping her and I into the same, um, you know, hate train that's against him and spreading lies and false accusations. If he's referring to the video that she made defending him and linking a video in her description box as spreading lies and false accusations, you're sorely incorrect. I said in my original video that when you discuss things in YouTube, you know, content, that you link your sources. That allows your audience to look at what you looked at and come up with their own decision and make their mind up for where they stand on the matter. Now, if she's gonna make a video about BX and then not link her source, then someone's gonna say, well, where the hell did you get all this information? Where are the receipts? So you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. But I had nothing to do with any of that video. I think in his mind, he has this whole misconception that like Amanda and I are, you know, down in a bungalow, like conspiring against him. Like it's absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand this train of thought. And if there are, I've said it before, sorry if I'm a broken record for all of my subscribers who have heard me say this. Listen, I can stand a lot of things in life. A liar is not one of them. And that goes for YouTube, that goes for Instagram, and that definitely goes for people in my real life. Don't lie on me and don't lie to me. So to say that any uh, false information was spread on my behalf, no, you're wrong. Next, let's talk about the Dad Challenge podcast and his snark channel. So... I have criticized BX for going after the way that Katie Joy looks, talking about her, you know, poor hair. And, you know, historically he had said something about having a 666. If you look under her hair, it's, it's all too much. I didn't like it. So he is trying to, he's trying to tie these two things together, how I support Dad Challenge podcast, but I don't support him. In my personal experience as being a subscriber of Josh since this summer, has he made fun of some of the outfits that these mommy vloggers wear? Absolutely. Sense of style? I don't know. Do I agree sometimes? Sure. There is nothing being said from my experience, from my seat. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong and show me evidence, but I have never heard him talking about these mommy vloggers being ugly or, you know, their, their hairline, they need to go get, you know, the edges stuff and all of that. In fact, I've heard Josh compliment these women more often than he's insulted them. Maybe I'm alone on this, but the way I look at making fun of someone's appearance maybe is different than the person next to me. And that's okay too. But making fun of someone's outfit versus saying that their edges are fucked up and they have 666, those are things that I just look at differently. So if I'm alone on that, fine. But I did want to address that since he wants to claim that I'm 
shoved up Josh's ass, which I'm not. Do I support Josh's message? Absolutely. Have I given him criticism? Yes, I have. I've not agreed with everything that he's done that I've seen. And I've addressed that in videos before. There are certain things that I do not condone that Josh has done. But yes, I do approve of his overall message and his overall goal on YouTube. And the other thing that I'll say about copying Josh's content, do I cover family vloggers? I do. But there's no copying going on here. That to me is complete and utter bullshit and I'm not going to subscribe to it. People that cover family vloggers are going to talk about the same group of family vloggers. That's just how it is. I've talked about stuff that Sloan has talked about, Josh has talked about, or Sloan has talked about stuff that Josh has talked about. Family vlogger commentary channels are going to share the same topics. That's just how it is. Next, let's talk about the Uni Rock live stream that BX wanted to bring up how he defended me. As far as him defending me, yes, he defended me. He said that Uni was wrong, which he was. Nobody asked him to defend me. I'm grateful that he did, and I have shown my appreciation for the things that BX has done for me. But that doesn't mean that I have an alliance to him, and that also doesn't mean that I need to turn a blind eye to things that are incorrect, and that also doesn't mean that I'm just going to be a supporter for the next five years, all because you defended me on a live stream. You gain from that as well. So don't act like it was just some favor that you did for me where you didn't get anything out of it. You got views, you got attention, you got the super chats that were coming in, and you also got the AdSense that was collected off of that video after it was up. Next, I want to talk about the fact that BX thinks that he got me to 3,000 subscribers. Wrong. That's completely incorrect. Let me tell you guys exactly where I was standing when BX first discovered my channel. I think that I had around 600 or 700 subscribers. He reacted to my channel, but you guys have to also consider that I was gaining subscribers because I made a video about why I stopped watching without a crystal ball. So a lot of that traffic to get me to a thousand was also because of the video that I made. Now, I will say, full admission, when he reacted to my two videos, I did have a group of people that were leaving me comments saying, hey, I'm here from BX Beast Boy, great job, whatever. And I have thanked him for those subscribers. They're probably all gone now. I don't know, which is fine. They're, they're picking sides, even though nobody has to pick a side here. Nobody's, at least I'm not asking anyone to pick a side. Nobody is trying to cancel BX. I've given fair criticism, just like I have to every other YouTuber. And that's what I will continue to do on my channel is to provide fair criticism. If I had to put an estimate on how many subscribers I collected from BX reacting to my two videos, in all fairness, I will give him credit for about 200. If I want to be extra fair, I'll call it 300 subscribers. There is no way that a channel with 12,000 subscribers would send 3,000 my way. There's no fucking way. Those videos do not get 40,000 views. The view count wasn't that high. There were a small group of people that did come over and that's great, but you're not going to try to take credit for building up my channel to 3,000 subscribers when that's just not true. Now, if someone has the proof of that, I would love to see it, but mathematically that just doesn't work out. My channel grew because of the Without a Crystal Ball video my other commentary videos, and the other newer content that I was interjecting in between time. The other claim that he made was that I made Amanda do a video on him. The video where she was defending him and linked the other video and all of that. While Amanda and I do talk offline, 
we have no fucking uh, conspiracy against BX. We have other things that we like to talk about. Sorry to break it to you, but BX is not one of them. And on top of it, what good would it do for me to tell her, go make this video? We did the collab saying, this is why we stopped supporting BX Beast Boy because we realized that our emotions were in line with one another. So that was one time that we did talk about him because we did the collab. But aside from that, our free time and our conversations are far from talking about BX. There's also this misconception that I made a claim, something about like being bullied off of YouTube. That has nothing to do with me, you guys. Like, I think that there is some confusion between when he's talking about Amanda and when he's talking about me. So I wanted to clear that up. Nobody is ever going to bully me off of YouTube. I will address things if I need to, like I'm doing today, but nobody is going to put me off of this platform. I love my subscribers and I love the content that I'm making and I love the community that we're building here. Nobody is going to get me off of this platform. It's not going to happen. Here's the thing. This is the most important part of the video and this is something that I never thought that I would need to address because I've never been labeled as someone who is the R word. I will put it right here because YouTube, I don't want this video to get flagged. The fact that BX Beast Boy would come on to his channel and try to claim that I am doing certain things because I am a white woman and he is a, as he said, big black man makes me sick to my fucking stomach. I will not be labeled as that word ever in my life. And if and when I am, I will defend my name. This is the part that physically makes me sick. Honestly, if he didn't allude to this, I don't even know if I would be making a reaction. But I will not be labeled that ever. The fact that I made a video saying, this is why I stopped watching BX Beast Boy, it's because I don't like his behavior on the internet. That doesn't equate to me using my race or anything that falls under that to my advantage. I also did a video the other day discussing racial profiling and how it's completely wrong. And I, you know, just like all of my videos, that video came from my heart and that's my message and that's what was put out into the video. For him to call that into question and say that I'm being fake or I'm lying is complete and utter bullshit. And, you know, if you're going to be upset that someone makes a video about you or gives you criticisms, be upset about it. But don't ever try to bring that into it unless you have concrete proof that someone has discriminated against you. Just saying that what, people are going to believe my uh, video because I'm white? No, no, I'm, I'm not standing for that. People believe what I say when they, when they want to because of the relationship that I've built with my subscribers. It's exactly what I said yesterday. With YouTubers, trust is gained in drops and lost in buckets. And I have trust with my audience. They believe what I say for a reason. So don't ever try to label me something that I'm not. It's disgusting. You know, as YouTubers, we have a big responsibility to make sure that the messages that we are putting out are well thought out. And if you are going to come forward with claims that someone is any sort of phobic or 
you know, the R word, you can't just label someone that with no proof. This is commentary. We're sharing opinions. We're giving criticisms. That can end in a very, very dark place. I will not ever be labeled that and just let it ride out. The next thing I want to talk about is the fact that he tried to say that he was an ally for Sloan, saying that his his video that he did about Sloan was just saying, oh, well, I have bipolar disorder. You have bipolar disorder. You know, this could be triggering, triggering for someone with bipolar uh, disorder. You know, he tries to frame it like he was just being an ally and, you know, whatever. For anyone that was in that live stream or listened to it before it was deleted would know that that's just not true. He was insinuating that Sloan should have nothing to cry about because he had a really nice apartment. He was making fun of Sloan for wiping boogers on his blanket and, you know, crying and looking for sympathy. And, you know, then he went through the whole thing with a thumbnail. You're not an ally. And anyone that listened to that video will know exactly what I'm talking about. People have said that he mocked Sloan because that's exactly what he did. If you're an ally and you are going to make a video like that, then it would be framed in a completely different manner. You're not going to be making fun of someone for wiping their nose on their blanket and, um, you know, babbling because they're crying. It's, it's grossly irresponsible to try to say that you're an ally when the proof is in the pudding. Too bad the pudding is in the trash because the video is gone. But I've noticed this pattern where you do bad shit and then you delete the evidence. And if nobody has the video, then you can call them out for not having receipts. The other thing I want to say is it, it kind of ties back to the whole false allegations thing. I've never once lied about BXB's boy. I've shared my opinion on his content and the merch that he's come out with and how he, you know, makes videos on his channel. Those are opinions and those are criticisms. None of it was ever a lie. There's never been anything that I have said so outlandish and crazy that it should have ever been called into question. I have have come forth with my experience as a subscriber and then as a former subscriber, and I've shared my opinions. I don't understand where this whole lying thing is, but if you're going to pin someone as a liar or a manipulator or the R word, it's like exactly what I said earlier. You need to come forth with hard evidence that that's actually the case. What does BX have on me? The only thing that he has is the email. I sent him an email trying to reach out because I was blocked from his channel. And I said, can we all just get along? Can we all just move past this? Like, this is ridiculous. I don't even know why I'm blocked from your channel. And he continued to spin the narrative that Amanda and I were mean girls and we were attacking him and doing all of these things when that wasn't even the case. You guys have to remember the original video that Amanda put out was defending him. She was taking apart this video that was actually, you know, bringing allegations forth on BX. She took that video from someone else and dissected it and called everything into question and defended him. She also gave some criticisms, which were fair. But all of this started because she linked the video that she reacted to in her description box. How fucking stupid is that? How dumb is that, really? I get a couple comments here and there. Why are YouTube creators tearing themselves down? It's because of dumb shit like this. This all started 
because she defended him and linked a video in her description box that had accusations in it that she reacted to and called them all into question. So stupid, you guys. He also loves to say that Amanda and I tried to cancel him. I never asked anyone to cancel anyone. I shared my opinion and where I stood on the matter, and that was it. I encourage you guys to listen to it with an open heart and an open mind, just like I do every other video that I make. Just listen to it. Think for yourself, make your own decisions, and if you're still here with me, cool. If you're with him, fine. If you're with both of us, fine. It's all good. I don't understand where this whole, like, cancellation campaign came from. I really don't. In in all seriousness, I don't understand where this idea even stemmed from for it to be something that is brought up repeatedly. He, he alludes to the fact that he's a big black man and a monster. I can't tell you guys how many people I've called monsters in my life. And I would never refer to anyone as a big black man. I think the last person I called a monster was probably Micah Stauffer. And that's, you know, earned in in her book. And the other thing that I want to say as far as, you know, labeling people and putting names on things. There have been a couple people that have come and said, oh, well, you know, BX doesn't make fun of the way people look anymore. He's growing. He's changing. The issue is, is that in this live stream, an over three hour live stream, you guys, I was made fun of, my appearance was made fun of, the way that I talk was made fun of and mocked, and that proves my point. So he's not doing it to Katie Joy anymore, but he's doing it to me. So... In, in my mind, your, your arguments of, well, he doesn't do that anymore, just all collapsed on themselves. And he is still doing that. He's just doing it to someone else. I really want to drive the point home that you should never, ever, 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 ever label someone the R word if you do not have a whole lot of proof that that's actually who they are. That is irresponsible. It's grossly negligent. And it's reprehensible to label someone that when they haven't done anything. I want you guys to remember what I've done in this situation is supported someone who was crying on live stream because she was very frustrated at a situation of posting a video defending BX, linked a video that had some allegations as a source, got attacked in her live stream. So I went and I offered her support and said, let's talk. Why don't you sign offline and let's talk about this and you can maybe, you know, do a video later or whatever she wanted to do. But I saw someone visibly upset that I consider a friend and I offered support. Then I get dragged into it because I offered her support. I go to his live stream. I try to have a conversation. I'm blocked. Then I go to my email. I send the email. Now I'm all of a sudden a really bad guy and I'm just out to get him. And then I share my video of why I stopped watching BX Beast Boy. Have I mentioned some criticisms here and there throughout videos? Yes, but that's what I do. I'm a commentary channel. And as far as anyone saying, oh, well, you're only a commentary channel because of BX Beast Boy, I would invite you to go look at my playlist from over a year ago. I was doing commentary far, far, far before Without a Crystal Ball was even on my radar. Somehow got wrapped into this and now it's being... This narrative is being built against me to say that I am lying about him and I'm the R word. 
That's ridiculous. It's absolutely insane to me that someone could even try to piece that together and pin it on someone. All that I've done is given criticism, offer to port support to someone that he had an issue with, and mention him in a couple other videos. That's all that I've done. I've never come out and said, BXB's boy sucks. He's the worst person ever. You know, don't ever support. Like, no, I'm giving criticism. I'm offering criticism and I'm being fair about it and I'm being level-headed. And I encourage you guys to support any creators on this platform that you want to support. If I'm one of them, great. If I'm not, great. I'm good with either way, honestly, you guys. Like, I just want you guys to be able to look at things from, you know, a neutral place and think for yourself and figure out what's best for you. That's all that I ever want. Whether I'm talking about family vloggers or other YouTubers or even, hell, makeup stuff. Think for yourself, make your own decision. I'm just here to provide information or commentary on whatever the topic of the day is. But at the end of the day, it did really, really hurt my feelings that he would try to label me as the R word. Knowing that I would never in a million years, never, not once, not once. It's absolutely ridiculous. I've never, ever, ever mentioned his uh, race, his, um, you know, his size, his, his physical build, nothing. I've never mentioned any of that. All that I've done is given some criticism and called out things that I didn't like. And for some reason, I got grouped in with, you know, this video that Amanda did, even though, again, it was defending him. The whole issue is that there was a link in her description box. And then evidently in the comments, like this mod, an ex mod came into the comments. I don't know. You guys can go to Amanda's channel and listen to, you know, she's, she's laid it all out there as well. But the thing that I'm focused on in this video is the fact that he wanted to label me as the R word. I owe you guys an explanation and I will stand up for myself when someone tries to lie on my name. So that's what this video was. And the last thing that I want to touch on is the fact that he, you know, BX is, um, he shows a lot of interesting personality traits, especially in this video. The fact that he is so self-absorbed that he thinks that I stole his live streaming time. Let's talk about that for a second. When I was doing lives more often, the last month I've not gone on live because I've been doing daily uploads, but when I was doing lives, I would go on at eight o'clock. At first it was at seven, but then I pushed it to eight. Let's talk about why. First of all, BX Beast Boy doesn't own any special live stream slot. We're all allowed to go live whenever the fuck we feel like it. And so, but let's talk about the time. So initially it was at seven, but the issue is, is that see, I work full time. By the time I get home from work, it's six. So that didn't really leave me any time to take care of Axel, cook dinner, maybe do a little laundry before I set up for the live stream. So I pushed it to eight o'clock. It has nothing to do with being in competition with him or his channel or his subscribers. I said yesterday, you know who's my competition? Me. Me, myself, and I, I am my competition. I am the one who's going to hold me accountable, and I'm the one who's going to try to do better than I did yesterday or last week. So I don't give a fuck what time he goes live. And if, if three YouTubers or five YouTubers are live at the same time, the subscribers are going to tune in to who they want to listen to. This happens all the time. I'll open my subscriptions and there's multiple YouTubers live. And I pick who I want to listen to that day. It's really not that deep. Nobody is out to get him. Nobody is out to copy his content or steal his ideas. Nobody is worried about it. So anyway, you guys, I would encourage everyone to 
always make sure that you are thinking for yourself. Don't just believe, you know, every little thing that you see or hear on the internet because there's a lot of things that are out there that just are not true. Um, it's unfortunate that it's come to this, but I, like I said, I owe you guys an explanation, even if I'm explaining something that a lot of you already know to be true. I needed to clear the air in this video because um, I, I will not be lied on. Like I said, people can have opinions all day, but if you're going to come out and allude to the fact that I am the R word, you better bet your ass that I'm going to defend myself because that's something that I've never been, nor will I ever be that. He also, the last thing that I'll say is he got very upset that I kind of ragged on him for being a full-time YouTuber and stuff. I've said this about many other YouTubers as well. I see a shift happen when YouTubers go from part-time to full-time, and that's something that I've seen for years. So it has nothing to do with just him, but there is a level of desperation that comes along with going from part-time to full-time. So anyway, you guys, I hope that this video resonated. I hope that it made sense. You know, make your own decision. If you don't want to support me anymore, then that's okay. I would love for people to be able to support more than one creator and not pick sides. There was never a cancellation campaign against BX. There was never, um, you know, if, if there's a cancellation campaign for anyone, it would probably be without a crystal ball at least regarding the YouTubers that I cover, nobody is is out to get him. Nobody is really worried about him. I'm over here doing my own videos, experiencing growth. So I'm in my own lane. I, I don't know. I mean, he's a YouTuber, so I'm allowed to give criticisms as I feel are fair. But you're going to come out and label me the R word and then make fun of the way that I look, mock my voice, make fun of the way that I talk, and expect people to take you seriously. But I guess his echo chamber believes everything that he says, and that's exactly what I do not want my subscribers to do. I want my subscribers to think for themselves and make the best decision for them. So that's going to be the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you want to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.